guess it's still afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good if afternoon. the sponsor would yield to some questions, please. Senator Felder, to yield some, to some questions from Senator Kruger? Uh, yes. Senator Felder Except yields. I won't answer any questions about carrying my groceries in hollowed butterscotch. I promise not to ask any questions about carrying groceries in hollowed squash. Is that what we heard? Okay. He would, he would know better. Senator Felder yields. Thank you. So, Senator, as I read your bill, it would actually outlaw stores choosing um, to charge for carryout bags. And there are stores that do that now. Um, Aldi's, Ikea, uh, some of the um, like BJ's, Sam's, Costco type stores. So you would outlaw them charging for bags, which they do currently as part of their, um, their own internal policies at this point? Through you, Mr. President. I don't believe in government interfering with private industry in general, because usually what, whatever government touches goes bad. So I certainly, the bill does not state anywhere that we're trying to prohibit private businesses. They can charge as much as they want. In fact, if they think it's a good idea, let them charge $10 a bag, if they think that's a good idea. This bill, this bill, is correcting a terrible precedent that's being set by the city council. And let me tell you, it's New York City first, and it's coming to you next, in that the state passes a law, the environmental advocates. And let me just say, I don't think there's anyone in this room that wants to hurt the environment. So having said that, a few years ago, maybe more than a few, we used to use paper bags. And the environmental advocates came along and said, this is not a good thing. Let's use plastic bags. And those plastic bags will be able to be recycled. And at that same time, the state established a law that would mandate that stores have bins for recycling. Unfortunately, the city and the state have not enforced that law. So the city council decided in its infinite wisdom that if a law is not being enforced, dump the law and make a new one. Well, that's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. And it would be a terrible precedent for us to say, no problem. If there's a law that you don't like, figure out how to call something a a fee instead of a tax, and everyone will be happy. So the answer to your question, in case you forgot it, was the stores can charge whatever they want. Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Senator yes. Felder, do you yield? Yes. Senator yields. I would like to refer the sponsor to Section 3 of his bill, which states, no retail store may collect any charge, tax, or any other fee upon a customer in return for the provision of any carry-out merchandise bag. So while I'm glad to hear the sponsor says he doesn't want to intrude on business, I believe his bill would because it says they can't charge for bags, and yet we have quite a few types of stores currently charging for bags. So I guess I'm re-asking the question, does the sponsor intend his bill? to prevent stores that currently charge for bags from being able to charge for bags? Through you, Mr. President, I think that it would be helpful to read the entire paragraph. Prohibition on the collection of a tax, fee, or local charge on any carry-out merchandise bag. No wholesaler may collect any additional charge, tax, or any other fee upon a retail store for the provision of any carry-out merchandise bag other than the original cost of such bag as agreed between the wholesaler and the retail store for the purchase of such bag. Additionally, and additionally goes on the last few sentences we just talked about, which was the prohibition on a tax or fee, 
no retail store may collect any charge, tax, or any other fee upon a customer in return for the provision of any carry-out merchandise bag. I would interpret that clearly as meaning that we're referring to a tax, not for a store to decide whether it wants to impose a fee for bags or anything else. Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes. It's, he read the section and may not collect any charge, tax, or any fee from a customer. If I'm charging for a bag at my store, I am charging for a bag at my store, and this would be outlawing that. I don't see how this wouldn't outlaw that. Thank you, Mr. President, as I said the first time, it's related to the bill that we're talking about, which would prohibit the city or any city within New York State from imposing such tax. Three, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to yield. Sponsor, do you yield? Yes. Senator Felder yields. So I have to take disagreement with the sponsor about what the language and meaning of the language of his bill is, but I'm going to follow up um, with a continued question. If you read this bill as prohibiting stores from selling bags to take product out of their store, does that mean they can no longer sell re reusable bags at the checkout counter? Um, most stores that I go into here in Albany, if they're food stores, or in New York City, they are selling reusable bags as a product in their product mix at checkout. So that would also become illegal because that would be selling bags um, to the customer to take merchandise out of the store? Through you, Mr. President, I can't answer my colleague's question based on a premise that she established. Uh, we, we disagree upon what the law says. You're asking me what I would do if I interpreted the law the way you are interpreting. I can't answer that. Through you, Mr. President, if the sponsor would you continue to yield. Senator Felder, do you yield? Yes, please. Senator yields. Thank you. The sponsor, in answering the questions of my uh, previous colleague who was asking questions, talked about um, it's not okay to pass a bill just to irritate people. I would argue this is not a bill just to irritate bill people. Probably every bill the state legislature has ever passed and the city council has ever passed and county legislatures has ever passed irritates someone. Does the sponsor actually propose that a justification to override a municipality's policy is based on a personal analysis of the irritation level? Is that the basis of passing this bill? Nobody's ever irritated? Um, through you, Mr. President. I wish that I had control of making sure that people weren't irritated. I might be able to run for statewide office. But I didn't say that. The sponsor of the bill said that. I don't think I've ever said that I sponsored any legislation to irritate people. I don't think that's the way you get reelected. But certainly, that's not the way you tell New Yorkers that something's good for you. Or you dictate to New Yorkers and you tell them, this is what you need, even though you don't think you need it, this is what you need. And the sponsor of the bill, not me, and certainly not you, said that the way this bill it's supposed to work is that the goal is to irritate people into changing their behavior. I'm only trying to be honest. I'm quoting the sponsor of the bill. I would never want the sponsor of the bill to say, Simka, you lied. You didn't quote me correctly. That's one. And two, my colleague mentioned once again this bill trying to somehow take away, remove, 
or destroy something that a locality like New York City has done. I will repeat it again. This bill is doing something very important, as Senator Hoylman said, but he said it to support his position. My bill makes sure that we don't set a terrible precedent by saying the state passes laws and then any locality comes along and says, you know, we don't like it that much. We're going to do our own. That's not the way it works. I didn't make the Constitution. That's the Constitution of the state. The state has rights. The locality has rights. The rights of the locality is not to pick and choose what it likes or dislikes and then come up with its own laws. Continue to yield. Senator Felder, do you yield? Yes. Senator yields. The sponsor in explaining why he thought the state should override the local law um, referenced his belief that this would have um, negative consequences for the people of New York City. If the research shows, which it does, that over 200 cities around the country have implemented variations on bring your own bag laws and that they've gone into effect in roughly 80% of the households in all 200 cities across lines of race, income, age, and family size have started bringing their own reusable bags back to the stores. Knowing that, would that influence the sponsors thinking about whether New York State ought to be superseding any locality in New York's right to pass a bill similar to the 200 other localities in the United States? Through you, Mr. President, I will repeat as many times as necessary. New York State is not removing, not rescinding, I forgot all the words I used to describe New York City's law, just the opposite, just the opposite. New York City is imposing on its residents an unjust and unfair tax, not a fee, a tax, which we know a law has been passed a long time ago that said that stores have to have recycle bins. Now, if the sponsors of this bill want to ban plastic bags altogether, they should say so. And that they'd be allowed to do, I believe. But if they want to impose a tax, and let me be clear for anyone who has any question whether this is a tax or a fee. A fee, New York State's Constitution vests only in the state legislature. And the distinction between a fee and a tax is pretty clear. A fee is something that government charges for a service or product it provides. That is a fee. You go and you want to park on a street and you have to put money in the meter. The government, or New York City in this case, is providing you with a space to park and you have to pay for it. You go ahead and you, want, you need to get some permits or inspections or anything like that and you, there's a charge. New York City is providing a service or a product and in turn you have to pay for it. That is a fee. But here, the government is not providing anything. New York City has decided that the retailer providing the bag, not the city, is going to collect money from you for each bag. That's not a fee. I'm sorry, that is not a fee, yes. That's a tax. A tax is where government uses its power to take your money and then decides how it wants it spent. And that's exactly what New York City is doing here. The fact that the city is not keeping the money, the fact that the city is not keeping the money doesn't make it a fee. It makes it a 
tax where the city is not keeping the money. So it's clearly a punitive measure to get people to change their behavior. And if we really wanted to encourage recycling, now I'm not suggesting this by any means, but there's a, my colleague Senator Savino always talks about the bottle bill. The bottle bill, the way it worked, is the state said if you want to buy a soda or anything like that, you have to put a nickel deposit, and if you bring back the bottle, you get your nickel back. And in fact, it's become so popular that there are many people who have made a, a, a living out of it. Many people don't want to bother. But that's, that's how the state decided to encourage people to recycle. And they either do or don't. But if they decide to do it, they get their nickel back. In this case, the city is telling people clearly that it's a tax because they're not giving you your nickel back. They're not telling you to recycle it at the store. Oh, I forgot one other point that you might have wanted to ask me in the future. I forgot to tell, tell all of us, tell, tell everyone, that it's a misnomer to say that people in New York do not recycle their bags. I dare suggest that if you ask 100 New Yorkers randomly what they do with the plastic bags they get and they use to bring home their groceries, they will give you multiple answers. Some use it to get rid of diapers. Some use it to make sure that they clean up after their dogs. Some people give it to their kids to be able to take their lunch to school. Some people take their books to school. Very rare, I'm not going to tell you that there's no one, very rarely do people take their bags and just throw them in the garbage. I know in my own home we have the place where we keep bags for, for those types of uses. And I, I might add, people in apartment buildings, they don't go out and buy Glad or some other company garbage bags. They use bags. They put the bags in the garbage, they put the garbage in the bags, and then they bring it down. Is that not recycling? I don't think there's any better way to recycle. So this whole concept uh, that's been created by some advocates that there is this. Some order in the chamber, please. I'll, I'll continue. I'll continue a little later. I want the senator to have a chance to continue with her questions. Thank you. So. So far we have, the sponsor has a different definition than I think the state has about what does it mean to be allowed to sell or charge for a bag. We have a different definition of what the state defines as tax versus fee. By the way, it clearly is not legally a tax that the city passed because the city of New York, as both the sponsor and I know, doesn't have the right to pass a tax. Senator so Kruger, are you on the bill or are you asking a question to Senator I'm Kelly? on the bill and I'll go back to questions. Senator Kruger on the bill. Thank you. So it is a fee because the city of New York couldn't pass a law that taxed. And in fact, it's, it's not even a fee that you have to pay. It's only a fee that you choose to pay if you continue to wish plastic or paper bags in the city of New York. If you bring your own reusable bags, there is no fee, there is no tax. It is up to you. Um, that is why it is correlated so effectively with changing people's behavior because they fairly quickly realize this is a win-win. They can be using reusable bags and not paying any fee at the store. And yet, if they decide they really need plastic or paper for some reason, they can pay the fee and still have access to it. As to my colleague's point about recycling when you use the bag for the diapers or you use the bag for, I think, picking up after the dog, I believe was the example, that's actually not the definition of recycling. It's reusing, but that plastic bag is still ending up in the waste stream. And the premise of why this law is important is to ensure we are decreasing plastic entering the waste stream, 
whether or not it might have a dirty diaper in it also or some dog poop in it also. That isn't recycling. If I could now ask the sponsor to continue to yield to some questions. Senator Felder, do you yield? Um, I do yield. I just wanted to make sure that my colleague heard the other examples that I gave. And dog poop. Yeah, because it Please. seemed to me that my colleague enjoyed those two examples more than the other. I might have appreciated those more. It's true, Mr. President. <laughs> okay. Yes. But I Senator to Felder yields. All the examples <laughs> Senator, that yes. he gave me. Senator Felder yields. Thank you. Does Senator Felder believe we have a problem with climate change caused by? human activity. Leave. Come back later. Through you, Mr. President. Is that your name? Through you, Mr. President. I, what I do believe is God's running the world, and people have to do whatever they can to keep this world in good shape. You can't waste. You can't do things that hurt other people. And, and by the way, I didn't have a chance to say that I do believe that New Yorkers are more important than bags. So I don't, I'm not here to discuss my opinion about climate change or what, what was this? I don't remember the second thing. I, I, Global I'm gonna, warming. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to caution both members. Let's stick to the premise of the bill right now, please. We're debating the specific on the New York City regulation and whether or not we're going to take action here. So it's, Senator Kruger, you want to pose President, a question? President, I would premise that we're discussing whether we try to get plastic out of the waste stream, which is correlated with increased environmental damage. So climate change and environmental damage is the theme of the underlying bill, Mr. President. Mr. President, is it my turn? Do you, do you, <laughs> Senator Kruger, I don't do you, know whether Senator you know, Kruger, do you object? Uh, yeah, Senator Felder, so, you may speak. So, uh, was that a yes? Yes. Okay. Speak. Through you, Mr. President, I beg to differ with my colleague. We're not here to debate whether it's important to protect the environment. We're not here to debate climate change uh, or global warming. We're here to debate whether New York City has the right to circumvent state law to impose a tax because it doesn't like the way things are being handled at this time. The the, I'm not discussing whether plastic bags are good, bad, or otherwise. And let me just say that I understood the distinction between reusable and recyclable, but I would also say is there's no way in the world that the examples I gave you are happening otherwise. So if they're not going to use the plastic bags they get from the store, they're going to go buy bags. And if they buy bags, they'll put in the, I don't know why I keep on picking glad, maybe they were on sale. But they're going to have to buy glad bags to send lunch to, to school with their kids. They're going to have to buy glad bags, plastic bags, to be able to uh, take care of dog poo and diapers. It's not as though we are going to be able to avoid that. So that's why I emphasize through you, Mr. President, this discussion is not about the merits or the importance of saving the environment or trying to avoid the use of plastic bags. This is about making sure that this precedent of New York City's council members telling New Yorkers, we're going to irritate you into changing your behavior to stop using plastic bags. And if you want to use them, you're going to pay a nickel. And I might add that there have been, in their law, in order to get it passed, they exempted, for example, they exempted uh, people who are on food stamps, from this law entirely under the, under the theory that if people come to shop 
They only bring their card and they won't have any change in case they want to buy a bag and they can't use the card for the bags. And I would say, wow, this is a win-win. There's no way, first of all, they don't have money, so they can't even get a bag if they wanted to. So the only way they'd be able to is by making sure they bring money, which would encourage them to use the bags that Senator Kruger is suggesting. So just to recap, in case I didn't say it more than three times, I'm, I'm not debating, or at least I'm not discussing those things. I'm discussing the process and the way government works. There has to be some orderly process of some sort, or else government is in havoc. And that's what I'm discussing. Senator Kruger. On the bill, Mr. President. Senator Kruger on the bill. I want to thank my colleague for his um, explanations. I don't think he does understand the details of his own bill, but we can agree to disagree. Here's why I disagree. Yes, the city of New York passed a local law. Municipalities pass local laws all the time. In fact, a fairly conservative Republican premise of this House for years has been the concept of local right to make decisions over what's going on in their counties and in their municipalities. And it is extremely rare for this body to pass a bill that would supersede local law and go further and prevent other localities from potentially passing similar bills. Suffolk County, Westchester County, Erie County, individual towns in those counties and throughout the state are exploring following the lead of New York City. But if we pass this bill into law, we've taken that right away from them. Now, why would they need to do this? Because whether or not my colleague agrees, the research from science that is not funded by the plastic industry shows that plastic bags are a serious problem in the waste stream, that they disproportionately impact negatively poor communities, that they increase the amount of garbage trucks going through our communities, the cost of collecting them and throwing them into the solid waste stream. The plastic never really deteriorates. That's not the word I wanted. What is a plastic bag but not do? Something. It shreds, but it never actually goes away. The research shows that this model works, and it's hardly unique to the bag issue. Many people in this chamber, well, we're getting younger, but I think still quite a few people in this chamber voted to expand cigarette taxes in this state. Why? Because there was research showing the more expensive you make a pack of cigarettes, the fewer people will take up smoking. That saves the state money in health care costs. Why did we create the cigarette tax? Because we knew cigarette smoking was bad for your health, and we wanted to incentivize people not to smoke or de-incentivize smoking by increasing the cost. In this example, the city of New York is saying, we want to incentivize people not to use plastic and paper bags that end up in the waste stream, doing harm to the environment, costing poor communities and the city of New York so much money. We want to offer them and encourage them to use alternatives. And they take many steps towards helping them, including offering free reusable bags exempting low-income people from the fee, um, so working with the stores to ensure that this all can go smoothly. It's a model that is not unique to New York City. As I said, there's 200 cities throughout this country that have already implemented similar laws. These laws have also been implemented in Germany, Belgium, Britain, France, and Israel. These places have seen their bag waste reduced from 60 to 90 percent. Now, my colleague's answer before was that environmental groups are lobbying for the city's bill and against his bill. 
and the plastic industry is underwriting research saying that plastic bags aren't a problem. I guess I would have to ask the question, we know that the plastic and chemical industry makes money on the continued use of plastic bags. I don't think anyone <coughs> believes Citizens Campaign for the Environment, League of Conservation Voters, the Sierra Club, the Nature Conservancy, Ridger, R River Keeper, environmental advocates, etc., actually make money from advocating for the environment. So I actually do think the legitimacy of the analyses is quite different. There may be flaws with the city council law. They might decide it's not working after some period of time, although I'd be surprised because in every other city and country that has implemented, it's been working just fine. People catch on quite quickly. There is some change in behavior, just like we saw fewer people smoking when we increased the cost of cigarettes. You raised, the sponsor raised an example of perhaps recycling like bottles could work. Unfortunately, while there's a market for recycled bottles, there's nobody who has successfully created a recycled market for plastic bags. It just doesn't lend itself to that. Another reason that the bags all do end up in our waste stream, whether unused after they return from the food store or filled with dirty diapers, dog poop, and the other items that my colleague used in his examples. Frankly, the state of New York hasn't overrode a local law and superseded a local law like us since I believe the Earthstat bill repealed the city's right to have a say over its own housing policies. And that bill was passed either in 1968 or 71, I don't remember at the moment. So it's been a very long time since this legislative body has taken an action to supersede local law. And for the record, yes, localities pass laws all the time for themselves. And most of the time, we respect their right to do so. I hope we will respect the city of New York's right to implement the law that they just passed. And let's watch and see whether it's a problem for people or not. I suspect it won't be. I urge people to vote no, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Kruger. Seeing and hearing no other senator that we should, Senator Savino, I, I thought you were going to explain your vote, I was told. Thank, thank you, Senator Griffo. Uh, I rise in support of this bill, and I want to thank Senator Felder for bringing it and for uh, shepherding this through the Senate. I also want to thank him for taking the time to hold a hearing on this bill in the city of New York. He held it about two weeks ago. Uh, I participated in that hearing along with other members. I know Senator Hoylman was there, Senator Golden was there, I was there, Senator Felder, uh, Assemblymember Dove Hyken attended. If I missed anybody, I apologize. But it was an opportunity for some of us to really delve into the details of this policy that the city council adopted and the mayor hastily signed into law. And so for those of you who weren't there and didn't take the opportunity to attend, you can probably watch it on video. It was a five-hour hearing. Uh, we learned an awful lot that day. But let's just go over the policy itself that the city of New York adopted. And by the way, just for those of you who didn't pay attention, this was not unanimously adopted by the city council. It wasn't even close. In fact, it was a very close vote, 24 yes and 20 no. I have six city council members who cross my Senate district. Every single one of them voted in the negative. Brooklyn and Staten Island. That's pretty hard to get all of them to vote no. They all agreed that this was a bad policy. So let's talk about why they thought it was a bad policy. Not because they think that overuse of plastic bags is good. They're not anti-environment. None of us are. They rejected it because it was not a well thought out solution to this problem. And here's the reason why. Because it's some bags in some stores, some people in some income levels. It is inconsistent policy. And so based upon that, I would say the council member who sponsored the legislation may have succeeded in his stated goal of irritating people. Because inconsistent policy is irritating in and of itself because it's difficult to implement and then it becomes completely unsuccessful. 
This body went through a tortured compromise in 2010. Some of you may remember it, those of you who are here, when we expanded the bottle bill into, remember we called it the bigger, better bottle bill. It was a very difficult negotiation. All of the environmental advocates who are writing memos in opposition on this bill today were involved in the development of that policy. But here's the difference between the bottle bill and this plastic bag fee. The bottle bill applies to all bottles in all stores and all income levels. Everybody pays the nickel, and all the nickels go into recycling. There is an expectation that the money is going to go to recycling. So we don't object to the idea of collecting a fee for the use of this item. What we object to is the money goes to the stores. They keep it. The stores don't even want it. The storekeepers who came in and testified before us said they don't want to impose this extra fee on their customers. They don't want to have to ask their customers who are on public assistance to prove that they're on public assistance like it's a scarlet letter. They don't want to have to ask their seniors who aren't on public assistance to pay a nickel more out of their pocket, even though they may actually earn less in monthly income than someone who is on public assistance. They don't want to be in that position. And more importantly, they don't want to keep track of nickels that they have no use for. So they said, why are we doing this? There's no requirement that any of these plastic bags or paper bags be recycled. So we're simply saying that if the city of New York wants to do something to reduce the overuse of plastic bags, we probably agree. They should have come to us. They should have sought our advice and our expertise. And it may have dragged out the process a little longer. Maybe they wouldn't have gotten to where they are as quickly, but they would have had a better policy, one that applied to all bags and all stores, so that when you went to the grocery store, you might have had to pay a fee. But when you went across the street to the pharmacy, you'd pay the same fee. Or when you went to the liquor store, because right now, under the policy that the city council adopted and the mayor signed hastily, stores, B bags that you get from a liquor store are somehow less offensive to the environment than plastic bags that come from a supermarket. I don't know why. Bags that you get from a takeout restaurant are less offensive to the environment than bags that you get in Macy's or another retailer. I don't understand why. No one could explain that to any of us. So it is inconsistent policy, which is irritating. And that is not going to change people's behavior. It is just going to create a problem for shopkeepers in New York City is going to create a problem for families in New York City and for people who represent coastal areas or border communities. Here's what's going to happen. Staten Islanders are going to go shopping in New Jersey. They're going to take their money with them, they're going to go there, and they're going to bring the plastic bags that they got in stores in New Jersey back to New York, and it's not going to change their behavior in the slightest. We're just going to lose business. We know this. And as a Staten Islander, I know I can speak for Senator Lanzer as well. There are no people more sensitive to bad environmental policy than the people that we represent. Where we live for 50 years, we were victimized by the worst environmental decision by the Department of Sanitation, the, the Fresh Kills Landfill, which operated for 50 years without a permit. So we understand what bad environmental policy does, which is why we also understand you got to get it right. Because if you don't get it right, it doesn't work. It has to be all in. That's the only way environmental policy works. We all have to be part of it. And so right now, we're not all part of it. Again, some bags and some stores and some people and some income levels doesn't work. It's not going to get us to where we need to go. That's why I am firmly in support of Senator Felder's bill. And finally, that, that hearing was um, you know, somewhat illustrative in many ways. It was kind of like a, a civics lesson and an environmental lesson, you know, Senator Hoyleman mentioned how I use the terminology that the city of New York is a creature of the legislature, and it is. And it is not the, this will not be the first time, certainly not since I've been in the Senate, that this body attempted to overturn something the city did. In fact, in 2009, when we were in the Senate majority in the Democratic Conference, the city of New York came to, the, came to Albany seeking the ability to raise their city sales tax to deal with their budget. And we said no took a little bit of shuttle diplomacy over the course of a few weeks before we finally granted it to them, but we as a body were prepared to say no to them. So this would not be the first time that we say no when the city council asks for something that we disagree with. This time, they can get it right. They can come back to us. This bill in the city council that was signed by the mayor doesn't go into effect until October. They have an opportunity to work with us 
to get it right and develop a sound, consistent environmental policy that achieves the stated goal of reducing unnecessary plastic bag use, cleaning up our environment, and making sure that everybody participates in a policy that works for all of us. I vote in the affirmative. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Lanza. Thank you, Mr. President, on the bill. First, I want to thank my colleague, Senator Felder, for doing something that too few people in government do today, and that is to listen to the people that we come here to represent. Uh, I take exception to something that was said during the debate, which is that Senator Felder uh, doesn't understand this legislation. I know of no one who knows more about more things than Senator Felder, and I could tell you he understands exactly what he is doing here, and that is he is listening to the people who sent him here. He is representing the best interests of the people and not listening to a few special interests. Uh, the other side, I think, misconstrued uh, and misrepresented what this legislation does. It was suggested that the plastic industry is the number one proponent of this legislation, and that's simply not true. Uh, the number one proponent in support of this legislation are the people we represent. I don't know about you, but I know this past weekend and the weekend before as I traveled through my district, I was approached by scores of constituents who were just scratching their heads in wonderment that the city council would even suggest that this makes sense and that this is the right thing to do. To impose what Simka Felder, Senator Felder, clearly stated as fact, which is that this is a tax. And we could call it whatever you want, but that's what it is. And you know, a number of reasons have been advanced over the last several years as to why people have lost faith in government. I think the biggest reason among them all is because all too often people in government prove that they are so far removed from the real living and breathing in their own communities, that they've lost sight of what truly affects the people we represent. And so what happens? False issues are advanced day in and day out to fill people's heads about what we think or it is suggested that they think should be important. And I think, quite frankly, it's because the tough issues are tough and people don't have answers for them. You know, I listened to the city council at their press conference announcing this tax talk about the effect on the environment that plastic bags have. And one member said that a plastic bag lasts for 5,000 years. It doesn't decompose. Senator Kruger alluded to that fact. And then seamlessly moved into a conversation about greenhouse emissions and global warming. I mean, that sounds like the environmentalist that I hear from so often who clearly was absent the day they taught science in school. If something does not break down for 5,000 years, or as Senator Kruger says, forever, well, then it does not release greenhouse gases. If it doesn't decompose or decay, then in effect, Senator Kruger, you might want to argue that a plastic bag is great for the environment because it locks up that portion of greenhouse gas emissions forever, never to be released into the environment. You know, you listen to the other side on this, and you would think that plastic bags are the greatest threat to our community and to our science to our society, and that we must immediately rid ourselves of this plague of plastic. However, if you, are, you can't afford the nickel, you can continue to pollute. If you can, simply buy the bag, and you can continue to pollute. 
By the way, the supermarkets will stock up. I think Senator Felder mentioned GLAD, but there are other manufacturers. You can continue to buy these plastic bags. And of course, for all the people that use them for the countless uses, uh, some of which were mentioned by Senator Felder, you can keep doing it. You just have to do what the city wants you to do, which really is not to stop using plastic bags. It is to pay for using plastic bags. And so it was also mentioned by Senator Felder, these are the same brain surgeons. When I was a kid, we had paper bags at supermarkets. These are the same people who said, they're so horrible for the environment. Stop immediately using them. And by the way, we have the answer, the solution, which will save the environment. Here it is. It's a plastic bag. Go forth. <laughs> Use plastic bags because we need to save the environment. This is the stuff that really causes people to lose faith in government. Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, liberals across my district and probably across the city. I can only tell you from whom I've heard over the last several weeks have come to me and have said of this tax, this is the dumbest thing, the most ridiculous thing that I've ever heard of. What is wrong with that city council? What is wrong with that New York City government? I heard that across every demographic for the last month. We've got to start focusing on the things that matter. We've got to stop making it difficult for ordinary New Yorkers to live in our communities. We've got to stop telling people that we want to control every little thing that they do just to support and to carry on and to live and breathe in our community. Senator Felder, thank you for listening to the people. Thank you for recognizing an action of New York City government that is going to hurt the people we represent, and more importantly, for doing something about it. Mr. President, I vote in the affirmative. Senator Latimer. Mr. President, I rise uh, to uh, indicate my opposition to this bill and to tell you why. Senator Latimer on the bill. I have uh, served four years on the Rye City Council. I've never served four minutes on the New York City Council until the last two hours of this discussion. This debate is a debate in the city of New York between the duly elected members of the New York City Council. Now, some of us in the room did not like the way that debate turned out. And therefore, in the New York State Senate and in the Assembly, we are going to re-debate that issue. Every day, I have people come to me in my district that say, do you know what the Port Chester Village Board did? Oh my God, the Westchester County Legislature did this. And do you know what the Bronxville Village Board did? How about that vote by the East Chester Town Council last night? What I generally say is, you elect your town councilmen, your village trustees, your local city councilmen, and your county legislators to be your voice in those level of governments. My job is to deal with those issues that are at the state level of scope, and not to come in and bigfoot every single decision made in Harrison, and in North Castle, and in Bedford, and in every one of those communities. When I sit here and I vote for local bills, that come from other parts of the state, I presume that those local governments and that local representative, and oftentimes it's only one of us that represents the smaller communities and even the counties of this state, that when they speak, they speak on behalf of the council of, of that they represent, or the county they represent, and that's enough. I don't want to have a public hearing on every issue when we have to reauthorize a tax and bring in the Board of Supervisors from this county or the county executive from that county or the mayor of this village or the town supervisor of that town in order for them to address a Westchester legislator and pass my test of judgment on their judgment. That is why we have small d democracy, because people vote for their town, village, city, county officials, no matter how big or small that city or county or town is. My concern in voting no is not about the city of New York. This is a debate to be had in the city council. 
And this is a debate to be re-argued in the City Council if the City Council got it wrong. But I don't want to send a message to Bronxville, to North Castle, to New Rochelle, to White Plains, communities I represent, boys, girls, whatever you do, you'd better be careful because the New York State Senate might not like what you're doing. The New York State Assembly might have a problem with what you're doing today. And even if you're duly elected in your community and by vote of five to two you pass something, those two guys can find their way into Albany and undo what was done. We have shown so much disrespect for municipal government, and I'm not talking about the city of New York. The city of New York is the uber, city go the uber municipal government, but there's plenty of other local governments that we represent. No increase in aid, uh, hard time getting their bills passed, back of the hand treatment when they come to visit us on issues. We've done that universally. Unfunded mandates, we'll pass a bill that says no unfunded mandates, and then later on, we'll pass an unfunded mandate. So the bottom line to me is this. Whatever the merit of this issue is, this is an issue that belongs to the city of New York. Are we the uh, government that can override in some fashion? Yes, we are. That power does exist. But when do we use it? We use it sparingly in only the issues of the greatest magnitude. Because how would we feel, Mr. President, if the Congress of the United States decided to pass judgment on every law that the New York State government passed? which they do from time to time. How would we feel as duly elected senators representing our districts, arguing an issue out and coming to closure, and maybe carrying the vote 24 to 20 or whatever the numerical equivalent in this room is, working hard just to pass it and to have some congressman from Texas say, well, son, I don't like what you did up in New York, and we're going to reverse that down here in Washington. Now, if you think about this, if you think about this, we're doing a very bad thing today. We're saying if any group of people, however large or small they are in a jurisdiction, doesn't like the way it turned out and don't feel we can reverse it, come to me. Come to me and we'll reverse it. We will have Suffolk issues on this floor. We will have Erie County issues on this floor, Syracuse City issues on this floor. And we don't really want them here. We want them resolved in their jurisdiction and then let the voters of those communities decide whether they were well decided or not. Senator Nazolio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President, my colleagues, I rise to join this debate. But before I do, I want to say a couple of things about the sponsor of this legislation. Over the last four years, I've had the privilege of sitting next to the sponsor. And I can say this unequivocally. This person, this senator, Senator Felder, has the utmost integrity, the highest standard of principled life. And it has been my pleasure and honor to sit next to him over these past four years. Winston Churchill said that the most important quality of any human being is courage, because courage is the quality that guarantees all other qualities. Simpka Felder is a person of courage. He's not one to go along to get along. He's not one to see the lemmings running in a certain way and joining that rush to the sea. He's not one to rush to judgment. Frankly, contrary to the comments of the prior speaker, Senator Felder analyzed this issue, and on behalf of his own constituents, as Senator Lanza pointed out very clearly, that this measure is to stop a new tax. This isn't simply to give a blanket authority 
to a local unit of government to enhance a policy. This is a new policy. Senator Felder and those who support Senator Felder's measure clearly are stating on behalf of their constituents that a new tax is not a good tax. It's not a tax that their constituents can support. And because of the courage of the sponsor, the direction that this legislation is headed is simply to say stop. Stop this imposition. Our constituents are saying find another way. And for that, Senator Felder, I thank you. I'm honored to join you in support of this legislation. And I congratulate you uh, for the courage that you demonstrate, not just here, but each and every day. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Felder to close. Senator Felder to close. First of all, I want to thank my colleagues for supporting this bill, especially my ranking member, Senator Persaud, Senator Lanza, Senator Savino, Senator Golden, and more than a dozen other sponsors, all of whom live in New York City. So I appreciate it very much. I also appreciate Assemblymember Michael Cusick, who's been leading the fight in the Assembly, and I hope we will succeed there as well. Just one, two quick, succinct points. As my colleague Senator Zolio said, this is about New York City imposing a new tax. In fact, Senator Kruger's example of the cigarette tax was a very good one. New York City did not decide to impose a tax on cigarettes because they are not permitted to. It's New York State that imposed the tax, rightfully so. And if New York City decided tomorrow that they wanted to impose an additional tax on cigarettes, I hope we would come back and say, no, we're going to prohibit that because they do not have the authority to do so. And finally, my colleague Senator Kruger said, it's about time, something like this, I'm paraphrasing, it's about time we respect New York City and localities and allow them to do whatever they want to do. My colleagues, I would say, that it's about time to respect New Yorkers. It's about time to respect our constituents who do not want to be driven crazy and nickeled and dimed every day. Thank you. I vote yes.